Hey everybody, Al Puglisi, Al Puglisi Trains, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to do another pastel video, and we're doing a lot of pastel weathering today with Howard Zane, or I am, as an apprentice. And the only way you can really learn about pastel weathering, or any, any weathering for that matter, is to do it. Just do it. And I'm blessed to be able to have Howard as somebody I can learn from, and watch, and then try and do the weathering, and obviously if I make a mistake he can correct me right there so it's just a, an incredible opportunity so I'm gonna do another video today of another brass locomotive Howard just purchased and uh, show you what the pastels do on this brass locomotive Howard how are you doing today uh, I'm always doing fine uh, <laughs> notice my hat today is celebrate and respect the elderly oh is it so I got my 1938 hat on since I'm a 38 <laughs> model Good Lord. Now do the math and you'll find out I'm an old son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's all right. It is what it is. You know, Anyhow, I'll tell you what. I guess we'll do a, a twofer, or actually a threefer, because i got three models. we got the um, the uh, this one, Laytonsville. Okay. we got the one over there for my Canadian customer. Now, I I was going to take a vacation, but I came down with some uh, a bout with the gout. Ooh. Uh, unfortunately, so my legs swelled up, and uh, I'm up fine now. It's okay. all gone. Want to agree, Doctor? Mm -hmm. So, uh, anyhow, getting back to today, we'll do the... I found this old locomotive downstairs. This is a, an early gem from 1962 that was painted for a private road. I think it's I think it's a gem. Hmm. It could be a Die Young, which would have been custom brass. I'm not sure. But the, the custom brass, the trolling truck, was a little further back, so mm -hmm. it's probably a gem. What is this thing, a mountain or something? That is a Reading T1484. Okay. A private road. It's pretty well done, but the paint is old. I'm not going to comment on it because I love everybody's work. Right. You can't do a lousy job. Now, we're going to change it a little bit. So, as you're watching, I'm going to make it, get this ratty old look to it, and see if we can liven it up with pastels. Now, I we, always like to work bottom up. From the bottom up. Yeah, that's my preference. So, start with the trucks. What now, color? Are you using there, Howard? I have no idea. Browns, orange, ochres, whatever I can find. There is no rule. It's just whatever looks good. Um, now we did a video a while back on this. It had 1,200 hits, folks. On yeah, that was the Allegheny. An Allegheny, a key Arconi. Allegheny. No, it wasn't a key. It was an. Arconi. Oh no, it was an Acani, a Acani Allegheny. Uh, and that came out very well. And mm. if you want to see that on the channel, you go into my videos. Okay, that'll come along this side here. Okay. Do the trailing trip. Now we'll, we'll light this up a little bit. So we will do that. We'll just hit a little down here. That's where your sand would hit. Mm. So always the bottom of the trucks. Now, I do have a relationship with steam. As you know, I had two uncles who ran steam, mm -hmm. and I used to spend most of my spare time as a kid hanging out with my Uncle Ike and Uncle Ed, and I learned a lot about it. So I kind of have an idea what they look like when they were dirty, and it didn't take long to get dirty. They could be repainted, and out in the road, and 20 minutes later, they look like they're a mess. Wow. So this will be a... We figured we'd do this video today, folks, even though we did that other pastel weathering video because... Well, it's a different engine. It's this a is different engine. Sense. I have no idea how this is going to turn out. This is the second time I've done this. But since Al said there was so many hits, we'll try another engine. And this is a perfect candidate. Now, yeah. this has all electronics in it. Jan just finished the work. Okay. I happen to love private roads because on eBay, nobody wants them. So there's always a better deal. Hmm. To get a private road. I don't want to give away my secret. Worst comes to worst, you can always repaint it. And I'm going to use a fine brush here. Yeah, you ain't now, kidding. A this lot one... of times you can do is use an eraser, too. Uh-huh. No, I was saying, this one uh, has some pretty old paint on it. Oh, yeah. That's... All right, now what are you That's doing? Good. Oh, it's just the water stains coming down the side. And then the bottom would be a. Uh... Mm. 
Don't panic. This looks like terrible. Well, didn't you say uh, you can use a pencil eraser if you overdo it? Oh, yeah. And this stuff lasts pretty long. Once you let it sit for a week or two, it locks in. Oh, yeah. About a, about a, about a week, and it'll lock in. Now, this brush is very fine, so let's see if I can get some more of these uh, stains going down. What's this, a black? Uh, well, not sort of like a oh, rust. I can't really tell you how to do this because I'm learning. This is only the second time I've ever done this. Let me find a pencil and an eraser. You can see if a guy makes a lot of mistakes, so all my pencil erasers are gone. Yeah, let me get, uh, here we go. That looks terrible. Oh. Let's fix that up. All right. Let me get some black actually over here. All right. Don't want to overdo it. So, so much for the pencil erasure. They don't want that. Can you turn the tender just a little bit toward me, yeah. Howard? Yeah, there we go. There we go. It'll fix that up. Oh, yeah, there it's fixed. Now, if you put the black over this, it'll uh, dull helps take care of some of the decal film and makes the letters look faded. Okay. Now you can go up and down. I like to go up, but sometimes it's good to do this. Again, I'm speaking with absolutely zero knowledge of this. We're both, you viewers, if you think you're learning, well, I got news for you. I'm learning too. Okay, let's get that out of here. Now, this trailer truck will be hit with sand, obviously. So, the sand would hit this part of the trailer truck. Uh -huh. Matter of fact, I would have been a steam locomotive engineer had they kept steam locomotives instead of becoming an airplane driver. I think I mentioned all the years I flew. Nothing ever equal to thrill of doing 108 miles an hour at a K4. Oh, that had to be incredible. It's not for the, it's not for the weak of heart. Was that uh, yeah. <clears throat> the Erie or was that a Penzi? or Penzi Reading Seashore. Oh, wow. And where did you have that trip? Uh, that was from uh, what was it? Williamstown Junction across the state of Jersey. <clears throat> wow. To uh, a town right outside of Philadelphia on the Jersey side. I just can't remember. Mm -hmm. But it was, uh, I was scared shitless. Now the firebox, uh... <clears throat> well, the firebox is pretty powerful. Um, I got the shovel coal when we were doing about 75 or 80. Mm -hmm. I took only took one trip. This is my Uncle Ed on the K4. And, um, that's starting to look, look good. And, uh, the draft is so powerful that it's a uh, pet or a small child can be pulled into the firebox and it's open. Wow. The coal almost flew off the shovel. At that speed, slower speeds, you don't know. So you always want to do the brake rigging. Okay, let's turn and the engine just a little bit okay, hard. Now on the engine, we're gonna <coughs> tighten up the cab roof just a little bit. All right, let me here, let me pause it. Okay, yes. All right, I'm back. I had to pause it there, folks. Okay, now what I'm doing, I'm using black pastel on the tender which will bring it back to life. It's, okay. You can see it's coming to life now. Mm -hmm. and that's just a black pastel. It's These black are pastel. pan pastels. Pan pastels. Okay, so that looks pretty friggin' good. And over here, where this will wear, will just come down like this. So what we're doing is resurrecting this thing. Not so much weathering it, but... Well, the paint job on it was so old, like you it was said. Old. It was good, but old. Mm. Okay, it, let's come back over this way, huh? This saves it from having to go to the paint shop again. Oh, yeah. And we'll do the cab, cab roof. All right. Let me... Uh... Now the fun comes. That boiler. Now, these things... Here, most me... locomotives were nickel steel. Mm -hmm. They were hand-rubbed. 
and they actually rubbed graphite. They had grab had engine wipers. They had graphite and rags. Uh huh. And I don't know why they rubbed the graphite into the boilers, but they did. So, the best way to simulate graphite is to use graphite. Mm. Okay. So that's what we're doing. Where do you get this graphite? Locksmith shop. Where? Lock any kind of locksmith store. Oh really? Yeah, it's right over here. Where, where the hell is it? Well. Oh shit! On just ask. It's ask, right, right in front of you. Okay. Mm. Extra fine. Damn! Look at this. Extra fine graphite. Now watch what happens to the boiler. This will bring it, make it come alive. Now, when you do this stuff, you got to understand it's going to make a mess. I would not recommend doing this on your wife's good kitchen table. Yes. Unless you like pain. Wow, look at that sheen, that graphite sheen. I'm sort of known as a structure builder, but I also play with my chuchus. Mm. I love these things. Mm. Now, every once in a while, <clears throat> do you have to refresh in the graphite every once in a no, while? No, no. Once it's on, I've never had to. All those Western Maryland engines, mm -hmm. I sold to Ryan. It was 47 engines that I painted. Mm. Uh, they they all, all painted the same way with graphite. And they were years old. They lasted for years. With the powder. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Well, you don't handle the locomotives at the top like that anyway. You're well, always a couple of weeks. Now, this is, a, this is like a three-color job here. He's got a, gra a graphite color here and a silver sandbox. Mm. Again, this is a private road, so we're not following a prototype, even though the local was a prototype. Mm -hmm. These Reading T1s actually at one time were a class I-10 consolidations. That in, during the 40s, they Reading decided to cut them up and make 484s out of them in their shops. Hmm. Now, I actually did see these run. 1956, the Penzi at least a whole bunch of these on their main line. And uh, I saw quite a few of them, hmm. along with the Santa Fe 2104s. Let me, uh... Now, uh, I can't really cover this silver on here, but I can make it duller. Mm. Jesus, this son of is looking a lot better. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize it. Yeah, this was a really old paint job, and it's hard to find people to be able to custom painters Well, and I can do that, but uh, well, why do it when I don't have to? Mm. Right, you can take the pastels mm -hmm. out and wake this thing up. Yeah. Now, I used to be a custom painter, but I gave up when the, uh, the most of the locomotives were starting to be made in Korea mm. instead of Japan. A Japanese engine I could take apart and paint it properly, mm -hmm. and we'll go back together. The Korean stuff, as pretty as it was, I never got it to get back together right. Oh, God. And it would never run as well. So I got tired of people yelling at me. Mm. Those are run. So That's... I said... That so I wound up painting only my own stuff. That silver box, you just used a little bit of black pastel on it, dulled it down. Oh, yeah. Hmm. We've got a thing over here. That's pretty much the way it should look, actually. Mm -hmm. That side. Now we got the other side. Unless you want to just do one side. Wow, what a difference. Okay, so it doesn't take long. Let's get the other. This should be done on a turntable, actually. Uh, well, let me put the son of a gun on a turntable. All right, let's pause it. All right, folks, we got it on a turntable, not a model railroad turntable, so no negative comments. Let's the, turn it. This is the un unweathered. And this is the weathered. It's not finished yet, but it's close. Still got back to do. Okay, let's get this. Oh, yeah, man. Now, see this over here? That's a wreck. 
So let's, let's cover that number so it's just about barely faded. Okay. Barely suit. Because that decal film is impossible to hide. Right. Except now it's hidden. So is the number. Right. Ah, <laughs> uh, you okay. can still see it. You can still see it. There'll be a lot of dirt back there. Now, there'll still be a little crab. Let's lighten this up a little bit. Somehow, the crap that hits the bottom of a rail car or a locomotive is always lighter for some reason. Hmm. I can put some shades of rust in there, too. Let's see. Some, like the coupler. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah, man. Be brave, folks. Okay. Now, let's come along. Now, let's get some of this powder off. All right, and again, here's the unweathered side. And I just want to get this on. Okay, let's go back. Last time we did this on the uh, Allegheny, and again, you can find that video in my videos. Go into my videos, scroll down, and look for the pastel weathering. That was the first one I ever That's did. That's the first one you this ever did. This is the did. second one I ever done with uh, pastel weathering. Wow. I love this. I love teaching things I know nothing about. Mm -hmm. People sometimes ask me a question, and I say, well, if I don't know, I'll just make stuff up. Seems to work. Oh, yeah. Yes, man. Howard, you're kind of like Bob. What's that guy's name? Bob Ross. Who was that painting guy that look, made it look so easy that was on public television? Oh, with the curl of kinky with hair? With the kinky hair, yeah. Oh, God. Okay. Looks like somebody took a dump on his head. Yeah, what? Mm, yeah. That guy made it look so easy. Well, you know, I was a painter. And, uh, I told you why I quit my painting career, hmm. or did I not? Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> well, uh, I was doing pretty well at the seascapes. My, uh, I was sort of a fan of the, uh, the several uh, French Impressionistic painters I like, and also the Wyeffs. I love Jamie Wyeff and Andrew, so I painted in that style. But a lady bought one of my paintings in a gallery in Ellicott City. And she uh, called me, found out who I was, which was not too difficult. And I thought she was going to come up to uh, commission me for additional work. Mm -hmm. Nah, never happened. I may have told you the story. I know I told Oh, I remember. Yeah, I, 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 I remember. With the fabric samples. Yes, yes. Well, since if anybody knew, I'll finish the story. Because anyhow, she brought fabric samples, wanted me to change the painting to match her new furniture. And you weren't too pleased. No. I just got turned off. I was a gentleman. But uh, I just wasn't interested in doing that. Mm -hmm. Right. Folks. You can do this on any locomotive. You don't have to have a brass locomotive. You can have a BLI or a... Uh, I'd recommend getting a stiff drink first. Right. Mm -hmm. Not for well, the you can't, you can't really. You can always take it off, so it's no big deal. Right. But it's easier to do a little bit than it is to overdo it. Okay, let's get the... Uh, that doesn't look that good, so let's get rid of that. Mm. I don't know. I don't Kind of liked it. A little black. Okay, now we're going to put the. Uh, see, that's a little too light there. So I add a little, little black. Darken up just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's do the. Uh, this is the graphite. All right, let me pause it. I just spray this in the Central Valley truck box in the last river or just keep it in the bottle all right again the extra fine graphite 
All right, crow flies, folks. We're in an overhead view now. And now again, you can, you can do this with a sponge applicator. Uh -huh. And uh, they, matter of fact, uh, they recommend that. But I get more control of a brush. Speaking of brushes, folks, it's a nice collection of there we go. brushes. Oh, they're old. They're old. I got to replace this. Okay, now we'll get back to the boiler. I'll, you know, I know you, you're in a hurry to do this, so I'm working as fast as I no, can. No, no, no. Can fine. you hear me okay? Oh, yeah. 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 Now, folks, if you want this done, uh, don't call because I'm not going to do it on your professional line. But I will show you how to do it. Mm -hmm. If you ever want to come over and bring your choo-choo. Or watch the video. Or watch the video. Because I can't consider myself a pro. This is only the second one I've done. I think that's quite an improvement, actually. Yes. All right, now, Howard, I'm sorry. What were you, you're, you're well, I'm dusting, just dusting it? I'm dusting all the excess powder off. Now, it's quite, it's quite a change. We actually resurrected a locomotive with a not-so-great paint job. But there's something that looks halfway decent. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. That's pretty much I'll probably do some touch-up work on it later, but that's probably good enough for your video. You're running out of space. Now, can you see the difference? Can oh, you, yeah. You Hold tell? on, Howard. Let me sweep, sweep in here. Okay. All right. Here she is, folks. Here she is. Eight. Big difference. What a difference. Big difference. 22 minutes later, mm -hmm. in real got time. A, got a new engine. You got a brand new engine. And it went from dull, dull to mm -hmm. super cool. Thanks for watching, and if you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. Helps get the videos pushed out. Thanks, Howard. Oh, thank you.